My name is John Wilson. I'm the director of London County Emergency Management. I'm Brian Burke, and I'm deputy director for Emergency Management Agency. Hi, I'm Mike McGrady. I'm consultant for Lebanon County, I'm STEM Consulting Group. And thank you for joining us today. I understand we have a couple of orders of business, and the first one is a triennial plan. As you're aware, um, Title 35, um, Chapter 53, um, every three years, which that's a 9-1 law, we have to uh, create a 9-1 plan for Lebanon County. And what the plan does, it says, you know, where Lebanon County is today, uh, what changes they foresee for the future, what the cost of those changes are going to, to be for the next three years, and that needs to be turned into the uh, Pennsylvania Emergency Management where they review it, and then it goes to the Public Utility Commission because we do have a landline surcharge in the county, and then we have to justify that, you know, $1.25 landline surcharge, um, and you have to offset it with the uh, wireless expenses. So going through that, um, some of the major updates, every section of the plan and you know gets updated, but the main sections that were updated were uh, section 2.3 when uh, we updated your new 12-hour shifts and your staffing pattern. Um, we also looked at proposed equipment upgrades for the future. Um, we've talked about your computer aid dispatch system needs to be um, upgraded. That was all in the, um, the plan that we did for you, as well as your login recorder and uh, the 911 CP switch. And when we're done with talking about that, I can actually mention, give an update on the regional shared services assessment, and we can talk about some of those items there. Um, we updated the list of participating agencies. As we know, sometimes fire companies merge, sometimes EMS services come and go, so we update that section. Uh, 4.1, we always update with the latest population density. Uh, we use 2013 statistics, that's the latest that we had for that. Um, we updated your latest organizational structure. As, you know, we, we did some reorganization of your 911 and EMA, so we entered that into the plan. Same thing with the list of positions. We uh, projected your three-year salary and benefit because I think we know that's one of the highest costs um, in, your, in your center is salaries and benefits. Um, latest training requirements, latest quality assurance requirements for your center, as well as the one thing we look at is your access line summaries, and that's your landline access line summaries. I think you know that every three years those go down because there's a lot less landlines than there was um, before, and of course that affects your revenue. Um, you know, there's more wireless phones, but there's less landline phones. The difference is wireless is only a dollar per line, as opposed to landlines a dollar twenty-five. So sometimes, every time somebody replaces a landline phone with a VoIP phone, which is a dollar, or a wireless phone, the county loses twenty-five cents, you know, a month on that. And then, of course, your nine-one trunking requirements, and that is how many trunks do you need for your nine-one calls to come in? And that's a statistical analysis that we do to ensure that you have enough nine-one trunks coming into your center. Um, for your call volume and um, that way you don't get what's called a busy signal that your, your trunks fill up. Um, of course we updated the most recent FCC licensing information, our engineers did that. Then you have to upload any contracts agreements that you have over $10,000 we did that. And the final thing is we fill out for the three years of, of what your total expenses for the center are estimated to be for three years. And uh, again we worked with, you know, with John and with Brian and then of course with your technical staff uh, to complete the plan. It took about nine months um, to complete. So there's a lot of minutia in it, but um, I think you'll be quite pleased uh, with the plan. We sent it to the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency to review. We actually had to change one thing in the draft plan that we sent them. We made that change, and now um, we're asking for um, the resolution and transmittal letter, um, which would be um, uploaded to the plan, and then it would go to the PUC for final approval, and then you'll be permitted for the next three years to um, charge a $1.25 landline surcharge um, to your um, subscribers in, in the county. I'm sure there's logical solutions or, or answers, but and what you did was fantastic, um, but I do have a couple of questions. Sure. The audits appear to be from many years ago, like 2008 or so. Is there a reason we don't have more current audit? Uh, they're working on an audit right now. So they're doing the current they're doing audit the current, they're for doing 2013, the current, they're but... Doing the, they're doing the it would be 11, 12, 13. Uh, 12, 13 right so, so that yeah. would explain. So that would explain why it goes back to 2009. That was the most so recent. So when we get that audit, audit, what we'll do is we'll actually go into the plan and update the latest audit. See, there's that's always a logical explanation. It didn't right look now. right, but it is. Yep. Yeah, okay. Every three years, so you okay. get the eight, the thirteen, the yeah, seven. Okay. Well, that takes care of the that. Actual. Question would be, the salaries that are listed. Does that include the pension? for the employees? On the benefits part, yes. It does. Then my final question, um, if I read correctly, and I hope I don't have it backwards, mm -hmm. we own four of our 10 towers? That's correct. Okay. 
Now, the question is, how many tenants do we have on those four towers? That we own? Yes. There's nobody on the ones we own. Okay. We're, when we're, we co-locate with some. Yeah, they're, we're co-located we on other companies. On the towers. other six. That could be cell site towers for Verizon and or at and Understood. Comcast. But on the four that the we... The four that we own, the only tenants that would be on there would be shared with... There's, there's maybe county things. The county micro... Or the, okay. the, the task force microwave is on the towers. All right. I don't know if this is a possibility or not. And I know Jamie always cringes when we come back from a conference. But the one vendor there had said to, to me, and I don't know if uh, Commissioner Ames talked to him or not. We couldn't talk, deliberate mm -hmm. outside of a meeting. So... Um, they offered one of two things. One would be is they would buy our towers mm -hmm. and then they would, you know, rent to others or they would just rent to others and provide us with income. In other words, we'd work out a, a ratio where they would... Right. Yeah, there's, uh, there's yeah. numerous companies uh, that do that. They actually stop there to see us. There's, there's numerous companies that will do that. And what they'll do is if you're building a new tower, what they'll do is they'll say, you know, you build a new tower and we'll fund it for you. And then we'll take ownership of it, and then we'll want, and then we'll lease space to other tenants. Or if you have existing towers, what they'll do is they will either market those towers exactly. for you, um, or they would even, if it's a very good tower, they'd be willing to buy it and yes. then give you revenues um, from that. What you would want to do is, um, there's multiple companies. So if you're going to do something like that, you probably want to put like request for information out. Yeah. So that you could get information from multiple counties, companies. What you also want to do is, is look at where those towers are located, because if there is a if there's a cellular tower right next to it, there's not a lot of value to it. And also, depending on when the tower is made, you would have to get what's called a structural analysis done to see if you could actually put anything additional on the, the tower. Um, but yeah, there's multiple companies that can do that for you. Well, I know we did structural analysis for Anvil, and I know the one that we just put up uh, to close the gap on the other end of the county uh, is done so at least two of the four have mm -hmm. fairly recent ones and it and then the the, the follow-up question because you deal with this every day is uh, if we would go this route would the money have to be applied to a bond issue or could that go to the general fund or where would the money go once it's brought in um, it's county revenue so it could be wherever the commissioners decide some places I know what they do is um you obviously have to pay for upkeep of your tower sites. So some companies take a portion of that, or counties take a portion of that and put it towards their um, upkeep of the tower sites or their, or, their, or their radio maintenance. So it's sort of a wash. I know some counties that are up in the shale region where they get you know $700,000 a year um, for either the tower sites or for the microwave, and they actually use that money to maintain their system. So mm -hmm. Subsidizing EMA, it would help to close that gap. Yes. If you could use and is that something you would have a problem with? No, no actually, yeah, actually, with actually right now there's there's some negotiation going on with Anvil. Uh, it's a, I think it's in the school board's hands right now if they'll approve it because it's on their property. John and I met with someone, uh, I think it was it's, Baker. It was Baker, company Baker that, that, uh, they sell for Sprint Next Town, I believe. They were interested in the Anvil site. Uh, you know, it's a little, we own, we own the tower, the tower up about five or seven years ago now, a uh, brand new tower, but we placed it on Anvil Cleona's property. And so this- They want to cut. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's typical. Um, if you have a tower built on state property that you're, you have a 99 year lease, you know, they'll allow you to put tenants on it. But again, you have to give a share of that revenue to the Commonwealth because yeah. they're giving you the land for free, right. so. Yeah. And the other one, we, the, the, the one on this building is owned obviously yeah. by yeah. us. The yes. one that- Did structural analysis on this one too. I don't know about the Granville one. That one's been there a while. And those give an idea of what um, capacity is available. And then if if you would want a carrier to come on, what they would do then is you would have them do another structure analysis at their cost, showing you know with their antennas, their line. So right. anything that you do with any of this, it has to be at their cost. And it should never cost the county any, any funds. Paul, and I'll just direct him to you guys, and you can and see if it's well, valued. Whatever. It's 27th, um, Chairman Barrar, who is the uh, chairman of the um, House Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee, along with Chairman Mensch from the Senate. Um, we are having a meeting in Harrisburg, so it's a chairman, and they have three um, legislators from each branch to participate, as well as AFCO and NEMA, the two 9 associations. Doug Hill from County Commission Association of Pennsylvania will be there, and the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Association will be there, as well as the carriers, both wireline and wireless, will be there. And we are actually starting intense negotiations on August 27th to have a 
completed bill um, to be introduced for when the new legislature is um, sworn in in January. So they really went to, they said, you know, they punted, they said enough's enough, it's time that we get legislation done. So we actually start the negotiations on August 27th and they we're going to meet, I think, every two weeks until a bill gets done. This yeah. is CCAP's number one priority. Yes. Yes. So it's important and, and uh, let all the emergency responders know we're, we're in your corner. Yep. And I, I speak to Doug Hill literally every single day, either email or in person on negotiations. So um, I don't think we're as far apart as, as people think. The, the issue was politically, it just wasn't the right time to, to pass anything that was going to cause uh, an increase. Election and, year. Yeah. And so, and, and they had some concerns about the transportation bill and, and things like that, that, you know, the, the effects of it were starting to come. So they chose that they thought politically it would be safer just to move it until January to get the bill passed. Do you anticipate, I mean, where do you, where do you see it might go? If they're going to try and flip the, you know, raise the cellular and lower the land? Or, no, it's, or? it's I, it, it will be, it will be a vendor, a um, technology agnostic rate. So it doesn't matter if you're wireline, wireless, voice over IP, it'll all be the same. And, and I believe that you are going to see an increase in the, Can because you sure. have to, right now, if you would look at the total cost of 911 in Pennsylvania, you know, it's, it's over $300 million and revenue is, is less than $185 million. So they're going to try to get the revenue up to uh, at least a point where the, the peace apps can, um, you know, can survive. So I think what you'll see is a, it's a, a small percentage goes to every county because you have big counties and small counties, and of course we have to take care of the rural counties, you know, because you know, they still have to have 911. So let's just say 5% as an example, will be just distributed among all 67 PSAPs. And then the other 70% would be, a, would, the next 75% would be a block grant. So based on call volume, um, population, you know, demographics, you know, whatever it might be, that would come right to the county. So 75% of the money is gonna come directly to the counties. Then I think you're gonna see about 10% of the money set aside for building a statewide ESI net, you know, more or less a, a technology um, net that can be shared across the, uh, the Commonwealth with all the police, the fire, the EMS, 911. And then the other 15%, and that's why we're doing your regional shared services assessment, will be for regional projects. You know, um, right here in front of me, we have a, a spreadsheet that we sent out to all the counties in the region saying, what are you willing to share? Everything from personnel to technology. And we know that you have to upgrade your um, 911 switch. It's due for an upgrade. Well, if we can find two or three or even more other counties that want to do the same thing with us, we'll have half the switch in your center, half the switch in another center, and you can have multiple counties share that switch. It does another things. One is it gives you redundancy in your network. So if your switch fails, it doesn't matter. The other side's over there, and your calls will go through that switch. Um, it gives you, let's just say, you know, we know you get flooding in Lebanon. Let's say, you know, the 100-year the flood comes, and Lebanon's under water and you have to evacuate your PSAP, well, you have another center that can take your calls during that period of time until you can figure out what to do. And of course, it saves money up front. Instead of going out and buying your own switch for $450,000, you can go in with multiple counties and maybe pay $200,000 and get actually a bigger and better switch. And then also for maintenance. You know, maintenance is very expensive. You know, you might be paying 50 or 60 or $70,000 a year. Well, if you have four counties going with the maintenance, maybe your maintenance cost is $30,000 a year. So you still have your own center, you're just sharing the technology. Right. And Pima, you know, would like to incentivize those. So what we do is we'd write a white paper. So we'd say, you know, as you know, in your regional shared service assessment, you know, these four counties want to share. Here is the white paper saying why we're going to share it, what's the benefits for it, and here's the cost savings. Here's a delta from a single system to a regional system. And then Pima would look at, you know, um, fully funding those projects. And then, of course, that, of course, incentivizes regionalization of technology. And again, regionalization technology doesn't take away a county's um, employees, doesn't take away a county's um, operations. What it does is it allows you to do them more efficiently. And more importantly, as technology changes, as people, you know, um, as technology becomes more mobile, it gives you that opportunity that if a call does go to, to, to another center, they can transfer it right back to you. Or again, if something catastrophic, Shaft happens, you can transfer, you know, you can have somebody take your calls. But even on day to day, let's say when you're getting all those floods, you were getting 4,000 calls in 24 hours. You can't answer 4,000 calls in 24 hours. But if you had multiple centers that could take that overflow, and you could set those extra mobile command posts up in your EOC and have people actually answer 911 calls like they're actually in your center. 
But yeah. the, the difference, I understand it, if I understand it correctly, mm -hmm. is they can answer the calls, but they can't dispatch. Well, that's actually part of the regional shared services assessment. You have a great microwave network that connects all of your counties together. And we're you know, having our engineers research that because that would be the next phase. Yeah, or if it was a fire or something, you know, they wouldn't even have access because our equipment would be gone. Saying, okay, what do you want to share? And then I think we have a meeting in September where we're going to sit down with the other counties and say, okay, these are all things we want to share. Let's go over the list. And then we're going to look at which counties are field. So maybe it's Dolphin County, maybe it's Cumberland County. And then we'll go to the vendors and say, okay, give us pricing of what it would cost Lebanon to do it by themselves. And give us pricing of what it's going to cost Lebanon and two other counties to do it. And then that will be in the report. So when the new legislation passes, we actually have documentation so we can go after the additional funding for your county. Great. And save the money. I'll make a motion that we adopt the triennial plan as presented. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Did you